Hello, and thank you for joining us during our presentation today. I'm Steve Dirks, president of GAMS Development Corporation. Today, my colleague Adam Christensen and I will talk about two new products that share a common purpose. They both help turn a GAMS model into a decision support application. Adam will introduce GAMS Transfer, a system for working with data. But first, I'm going to talk about GAMS Engine, a product that allows you to easily run GAMS jobs on centralized compute resources. I will give you an idea of how GAMS Engine is designed, how it works, what it can do, and how you can use it to boost your own applications with a few slides and a live demo. But before this, let's take a moment to introduce GAMS for those of you who do not know us. GAMS stands for General Algebraic Modeling System. And as the first algebraic modeling language, it can trace its roots back to a World Bank project begun over three decades ago. Since then, algebraic modeling languages have become common in a wealth of areas, and GAMS has been one of the main tool providers in this market. Currently, we have offices in the US and Europe with around 25 full-time staff. As you can see, our clients are all over the map with worldwide coverage, and in a similar way, we have a number of technical competencies and skills with uh, basic computer science, modeling and optimization expertise, and also some domain specific um, experts on staff that we do, we use for consulting work. So here we have a bird's eye view of GAMS engine and we can identify its main components. The first, and perhaps the primary component is the broker. The broker provides a REST API that all clients use to access Engine. For example, GAMS Studio, Miro, the web user interface, and any custom client that you might choose to provide. Now, this is enabled by something called the Open API specification. We have a text-based representation of exactly what this API can do in a JSON file. And this allows us to automatically create interfaces in a variety of different languages, Python, Java, C++, I could go on and on. So there's the broker. The second component is the job queue. Now let's stop a second. What is a GAMS job? By a GAMS job, I don't mean a solve of a model instance, say, a an instance of an LP. Instead, I mean the entire GAMS run that you might do at a command line by doing GAMS project.gms or something like this. So the bulk of the work in a GAMS job could be a solve, but it could be a bunch of data work as well or a combination of the two, but it's the whole GAMS job that's running. The jobs are submitted to the broker and they're put into a queue where they're eventually assigned to a GAMS worker. These workers are the third main component of the system. The multiple workers can run on a single machine or they can run on individual machines or on multiple machines. Okay. GAMS engine is implemented via a Docker stack. In other words, a collection of containers that communicate with each other through the Docker network. So again, we start with the broker here. That's the REST API. All client requests come through this broker, job submission, results query, administrative task, anything you choose to do, you talk to the broker. Uh, this is perhaps a good time to mention that that web user interface that I mentioned earlier and I'll be demoing, that's not a special backdoor to GAMS engine. We use the broker in that user interface just like everybody else uses the broker. So the functionality we use to implement that is available to everybody and their custom clients. The central part of engine is the, is the queue, uh, rabbit MQ. Jobs are submitted there and they're assigned to the workers. One nice thing about using Docker for this is that it's got some built-in fail-safe mechanisms. If a worker would die for whatever reason, disappear, be shut down, that would be sensed by the queue and that worker would be restarted. We have a database that's used to store all sorts of information about users, about jobs 
about authentication, whatever we need, because there's quite a bit of capability in terms of user management built into Engine. And then we have file storage. It's possible to pass the models in when you solve, but also you can arrange to have some things stored in Engine to realize some efficiencies. So we have a, a file storage component here as well. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, we have the workers. They process jobs as assigned and um, store the results or return the results when things are done. Now, all of these containers are communicating via a private internal network. Only the broker has a second connection to a public facing network. So you only talk to the broker and that's called engine X. So if you're running this and you see engine X, that's the broker. Now, dockerization has a number of benefits. For example, if these workers need some third party software, maybe you have some special Python packages or you just want to run some additional things besides basic GAMS, you can create a custom worker image and you only need to update that and you don't have to update the entire system. We could pull out the Postgres here and we could use some other database package if we wanted to. I mentioned the failover recovery that's happening automatically. And perhaps the biggest advantage by using um, a dockerization, we can trivially add more workers. Um, we need to have the physical resources to run them, but the fact that they're dockerized makes it easy to spin up more workers or bring them down um, as, the, as the case or situation demands. So as part of this demo, I'm going to show you what you can do in a basic way with the web user interface. That's how I would recommend anybody starting with Engine um, begin. But then I'm also going to show what you can do with a custom client. I'm going to use Python for this, but there's many other languages you could use. Prerequisites are a Windows machine that's all updated. and It's basically ready to run Docker. And in addition, Python 3 was installed already. But that's essentially it. I'll show everything else. So the first thing we do as part of this demo is to install and start Engine. So you see here on this web page, part of the Engine documentation, we have the steps. We extract the GAMS engine.zip that you've downloaded. I'm not going to do that all now. I have done that a little. Uh, slightly uh, prior to this, but we can see it here. So we have the gamsengine.zip file that I downloaded and um, there it is, the directory that's created. Following the directions, I cd into that directory and then I'm gonna run the up command. I can specify the port number, I'll use an alternate port here and I'll specify a total of four workers. And I'm going to run that. It's going to take a little while, especially the first time you run this. It's got to pull uh, the Docker image. It, that's not part of the original download. That happens automatically. Now it's simply making sure I've got the latest image. So it's always checking to see if there's any updates there. Now it's starting. These messages look pretty good. So my engine instance is on the way up. You can think of this as something that in uh, in a more real life example, somebody else would be doing this. Somebody else is setting up your engine instance. But here, uh, we're going to make that part of the demo. So I'm running this on my Windows machine with all this WSL stuff and all these things. But here we go. It's going. If I want to, I can do a quick Docker PS and see what all my processes are doing. So everybody started up. That seems pretty good. All right, looks like we're in good shape there. Engine is going, but let's check it out. So it should be on my local host, port 8888. The pair is admin, admin, and it's going to give me a lot of messages. It doesn't like me doing that, but OK. So my GAMS engine is working. It started. So let's, um, oh no, the first thing we need to do before we can run anything, we need to put a license in there. So here I've got the, essentially the license text that you might get from our sales team for a demo. So update engine license, put that in there. 
and I'm going to get the GAMS license file that goes with this engine instance, put that in there. And that's all working great. Okay, now we can try this out and solve a job. Which job am I going to solve? So I've got my model here. I've got the schedule.gms is the model I want to solve. And the data for it, I've collected in data.zip. That's essentially going to define this job. So new job, not going to use a registered model. Now let's see, I should put the main file in there. Schedule.gms. And I can drop a data file in there as well. Submit the job. It's a small job, so it won't take long. The results look, well, let's see. The results look good, huh? So far, so good. We solved, this is clearly the transport model. It's got the well-known objective function. Everything's great. And I can also download the results. So if I do that, pop it right over those. And what did I get? I got everything back. I got my inputs, all the LST files and everything. Okay, that's fine, but we can do better. We go back here, go to users, no, go to models. I wanna create a namespace. If everybody's using the global namespace, it gets a little crowded. So we can create our own space to do things. Let's call it informs. So now we can do things in there. An engine has a whole set of um, permission settings. So you could give some users abilities or permissions to do things in informs, but not in the global namespace. There's read only, read write, all sorts of different ways to set up your um, users effectively here. And more can be done. If I don't always want to take that model and send it as part of my job, I can sort of register it. So that model is parked there. So I'm gonna do that, it's called schedule. And I don't wanna get all the results back. I really only need one file and that's solution.gdx. I don't need anything else back. So I've successfully added my model to the informs namespace. Now I can do this job a little bit differently. New job but I'm gonna make it in the informs name. I'm gonna use a registered model. So now I don't have to give the model source. Maybe I didn't write that. Maybe I only have some data, which I wanna submit so that uh, something get, can be produced. I'm gonna act like an end user of this model. So now if I look, well, I didn't, I didn't say I wanted the log file, so there's nothing there. And if I download the results, What's in there? So now I have only the solution file. So I'm getting back only what I want. Okay, that's fine. Now I want to do this using a custom client and not GAMS engine. As before, let's see, we have some documentation for that. So prime, the first thing is to get the JSON file, gamsengine.json. That describes what the API looks like. And with that, you can use an interface generator. There's many different ones out. This is the one that um, we used here. I didn't actually do it on this machine. I ran all this stuff on a different machine and just brought the, the client over. So the interface is contained in the file engine API python.zip, and I just unzipped it into this directory and and installed it as, as Python. But basically this was done with exactly these commands here. And with that, I can start writing some Python. So let's keep it simple. To start, let's just list the jobs. I have to tell my Python code a little bit about my engine. So what, what's the port, where is it, password information, but that's it. I create a jobs API. And with that, I'm able to access the job functions. For example, I can list the jobs. So there ought to be how many jobs? Let's check. 
there should be two jobs. One of them is owned by Informs or in the Informs namespace, the other is not. So what happens when we do that? Yep, two jobs and our jobs, there's only one, that's the informs job. So now we know this is working, we can go for something else, we can actually submit a job. So the first part of this file is just the same configuration, create an instance of the API, but now we submit the job, where do we do the create job? Right here, create job, and then we wait for it. So there's an API for waiting as well. And once we're finished, then we can be done. We jump out of our wait loop. We get the model results. We get this zip file, or excuse me, this GDX file. And then we can remove the GDX file from the server. So what files do we have now? All right. run the submitter file, do this, job was started, waiting to finish. Now you see the solution.gdx file is back. And when I go ahead and look at the job list of jobs again, we see that there was one that we started just a few seconds ago, even though we started it with the uh, custom client. Of course, it shows up just like any other job. In closing, I'd like to just mention some of the benefits of using Engine. If you've got powerful server hardware, whether on-prem or in the cloud, Engine provides a way to harness that and let a number of people use that hardware. Job scheduling is built in, so there's no need for you to build your own scheduling solution. I, Engine gives your clients ability to do other things, to be offline after they submit a number of jobs and collect results later. And finally, you get centralized license management, which can be really useful in some larger organization. And finally, I should make sure to thank my colleagues, the people who did the programming work uh, on GAMS Engine, Burak, Freddie, and Robin. If you wind up talking to them in any interaction you have with GAMS about Engine or anything else, you're in good hands. <laughs>